Uh, this is my first full-length painting video that isn't a TikTok, uh, so I'm excited. This is a four-part uh, painting, meaning it's like segmented into four different uh, paintings of the same um, environment. I was going to start on this little area here. It's in an isometric view, kind of like, uh, almost like it's something you'd see in like a video game or something. And uh, I thought it'd be really cool. So I'm going to start off with the light source so that I know the brightest areas, uh, where the brightest areas are. And that way I could uh, go from light to dark. Because whenever you do a light source, um, the objects in your scene can't be brighter than the actual light itself. So I like to put in the light source first. Sorry if my hand is in the frame. So that I can uh, get a reference of where my... Uh, kind of a, an idea of the value range that I have. If that makes any sense. So I'm going to put in a little... little fire right here. This is supposed to be like some kind of some kind of furnace or something. Now I'm gonna take that same color that I mixed. I'm going to add a little bit of red, just a tad. Put it right here. Then I'm going to add a little bit of black, which I do not have on my palette at the moment. A little bit of black. I'm going to kind of build this, this uh, gradient from the, uh, the floor. This is going to be slightly darker as it goes away from the light source. And you just keep doing that. I'm gonna add just a tad more black. Now when I add black, it's also going to uh, desaturate it. Meaning it's gonna gray it down a bit, which is also what I want. Cause that orange is a, a vibrant color and as it turns away from the light source, it has less of that color from the light and more of the color, natural color of the actual object itself, if that makes any sense. Do the same thing. It's probably about as dark as I'll go. Probably be even darker in this area here, kind of by these crevices. So I'm going to uh, add some more black, make it darker up in here. Kind of where this crevice is. Maybe where it meets the... Probably dark it in here where the uh, door frame is or the door is. Do the same thing. Then I'm going to go even darker, quite a bit darker.
think so. All right. Now I'm going to put in the deepest dark colors. Where the deepest shadows are going to be. Things like under these. You probably don't know what these are yet. Because it's kind of crudely drawn. This is like a, a bed. A bunk bed. So underneath there will probably be pretty dark. And here is probably going to be pretty dark. Probably right in here. Just kind of these nooks and crannies, things like that. All right, now I'm gonna add a blue light. Kind of a grayish blue. And that's gonna be from this uh, lamp right here. So we're gonna take blue, add some white, and some black to kind of gray it down. Start with the floor. And just like before, um, as it goes away from the light source, it'll start getting darker. So I'll be about this color going in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it brighter. Should probably go. Quite a bit brighter than that. Okay, going brighter. That's more like it. Like that. Now this will be the challenging part, blending th this lighter color with this color of the fire on the floor. So I'm going to add, make it a bit darker like before. Do the same, the same thing. That didn't make much of a difference. I'm going to start adding in a little bit of that warm color. That uh, that kind of orange brown to this as it gets darker. It's pretty hard to do because it's very fine detail on this painting. Doing the same process, add a little bit of black and some more of that brown color. That's literally hardly any difference. We add a little more black. A little bit orange. So you get kind of that nice transition. This is exactly what I was going for.
did in here as well. Got to kind of be careful not to go over the, the, the lines of the chair that I have drawn here. I'll try to blend it in just a bit with my fingers. There we go, that's pretty good. Go a tad bit darker. Because as you can see, I'm going farther away from the light. Like so. I think I decided I'm gonna gonna put in another light source like right right here. And there's a reason so these are uh, gonna be rugs. So uh, they're gonna be a different color. In the same process as it goes away from this light source. The light source is gonna be like right around, right around here. I haven't painted it in yet, or drew it in, because I just now decided to do that. A little bit darker again. So that's why I like to start with the lightest colors. Not always, but situations like this, I, I like doing it because it's uh, gives me an idea of how dark I should, should go and gives me like a range. So I know it has to get darker as it goes away from the light source. So I, I could just keep creating these uh, gradients. There we go. Now what I did was, we have this light source that's going to be here. I'll draw it in now. Oh. It's going to be right here. Very crude, but that's fine. So the rug is going to be a red color. What I'm gonna do is I put in the color of the light that I used here and mix it in with the color of the rug that I wanted, which is red. And I also made it bright. Like so. Then as it goes around the light source, you add a little bit more of the rug color, which is in this case red, and it gets darker. And uh, rinse and repeat. So even darker.
Here we go. Might go a little bit darker. On the uh, outer edge there. Right here. You can see it creates that nice illusion of, uh, of light. I don't know if you can tell, there's uh, gonna be a rug underneath that rug. So, and I decided that one would be blue or like a purple. So, what I do is I add that orange color of the light. A little darker than that. Maybe a little more red. Yeah, something like that. Add a little black, a little more red. Now, I'm going to do the same thing and a little more blue this time, lighten it up a bit because now this part of the rug right here is facing more to this light, which was like a light blue color. So it's, we're having that same color, but adding a little bit more blue. So, now, I'm going to add some more red to that, add a little bit of black, I'm going to make a dark crimson red color, I'm going to be adding the occlusion shadow, where the two rugs meet, to kind of separate them. So, okay. Now we're going to be doing this uh, little um, furnace here. So we're going to consider, we're going to do a base tone, which is sort of this grayish red color. I want to consider my light source. So since this little thing that I'm painting in now is like a, a tube kind of, it will be darker on this side. Like so. Be dark on this side. Okay, now the the light the, ang uh, the angle of this um, little furnace is fa that's facing this light is going to have more of that light color with this, which in this case it's a blue. 
So we'll go take that color we just used, add a little blue, and then lighten it up. Like so. Same here, the side is kind of facing. Then it'll get darker again as it goes away from that, uh, that ceiling fan light source. Just vaguely darker. Oops. Now, there's this light source right here, which is like a yellowish orange. So we're gonna take that color, same color we just did, Add a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red to create that orange color. Then brighten it up because it's going even brighter again. So as you can see, right around this direction right here is where uh, Second light source will hit it. Like so. Then I'm gonna go even darker as, as it turns away from that uh, light source. It's really just kind of considering angles and the color of the light itself. And uh, as it turns away from the light source, it gets darker. Can be real dark and up in here, up in this little uh, crevice. Same here. Let's, let's paint these uh, these pipes right here. Let's get those in. So I'm gonna do kind of a, I don't know, maybe an orangish color. Add some red, a little bit of yellow. And then uh, desaturate it with some black. And it's gonna, we're gonna start off with a dark color because it's gonna be quite dark. That's because these pipes are sitting above the light source. Like this light is above the ceiling fan and above this light source here, so it's getting very little light. Might even go darker than that. We'll see. is kind of giving me a hard time right now. All right. Just going to do that the whole the whole pipeline there. As you can see, I got all the pipes painted in. Um So now what we're going to do is consider the light source again. So we have this blue light here, this red light from the flame here, and a yellow light here. 
So we'll start with the, the blue light. So we're gonna take that pipe color that we already had that we used here and add some of that light color, uh, the blue light color to that mixture. And then consider the angles. So you want it, it'll be facing the direction of um, the light. So it'd be like right here would be illuminated. And on this specific scenario, I'm actually going from dark to light. Let me switch brushes real quick. There's a, a finer brush that I have. Hopefully this is a little, a little better. Yeah, this is a lot better. This angle is also facing the light. Now I'm going to go even brighter with that color. Where it's most concentrated should be like right near the, uh, the actual light itself closest. I'll be on the left side now. So, as you can see, I'm not doing the back end because the back end is facing this direction away from that light. So it wouldn't be, oh shit, wouldn't be getting any of that light. That's okay. That's the nice thing about painting. I just paint right over it. Then we're doing the same thing with this pipe. So we're going to consider the light source. Um, any surface that's facing this light source will be illuminated. So I just took some of that orange color. So. Same thing on this side. So, and uh, as you can see, it's already starting to kind of create that uh, that spherical shape, or cylinder shape, I should say. Now, the, it's gonna be most concentrated right here, I think. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that color to brighten it up, and a little more red. I apologize if my hand's in the way. There we go. Likewise, it's also most concentrated on the other side. With that blue light, so. This is really close to that light, so it's going to be pretty light. There we go. Okay, so I finished the floor, at least in this section. I haven't done a whole lot there, but I finished this area. And now this is going to be the fun part. Um, I'm going to take the floor color in this case. And it could be really any color in this situation. It's going to be like a dark brown, but it's going to be very, very dark, almost black. So I'm just taking red, yellow, and black. 
basically your browns are basically desaturated oranges if you didn't know I'm gonna start making some detail now on the f actual floor itself so right now it's kind of all over the place but I'm gonna start putting in some Little details here and there. What I'm doing right now is I'm making the uh, the crevices of uh, like the cracks in the floors and things like that. And so that's getting like minimal light, which is why it's uh, such a dark color, even here in this area. Hopefully it turns out decent. It's not really much of a rhyme or reason to the design. Just kind of making it look like some sort of stonework, some masonry. As you can see, it kind of puts the floor together a little bit, makes it look more structured. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue doing this, kind of cut ahead, uh, just to save time. Got most of the floor done here, I'll, uh, except for here. Put some little cracks here and there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is set our light sources again in angles. So we're gonna take this flame color here in the uh, little stove or heater, whatever the hell that is. I'm gonna add some orange highlight from that fire. and add some white to it to brighten it up. Add a little more red. Apologize for the weight, I'm almost done. Like so. And then all the angles on these bricks, that's facing that, that light source will be illuminated by this uh, this color. Needs a little more, a little more yellow. There we go. Perfect. Like so. Then, um, gonna do the same thing with the light blue color from the fan. It's right here above the table that you probably can't tell is a table because it's just a drawing at the moment, but it's a table. I'm gonna take some blue, a little bit of black, I want to create that desaturated light, cool light color. A little more black. Get 
Okay, here we go. So it's just the areas that that'd be facing the light source <clears throat> or the angles I should say it's like this angle here this angle facing the light source hell even this pipe could use a little more highlights Right here. That's up here. Hell, even in parts right there. Like that. Oh, we've got a few areas. There we go. All right, now the final light source, this one right here. Do the same thing, so an angle facing That direction be lit up. Like that. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna be painting this this front wall right here. Since it's a uh, this is facing the Make it a little a little grayer. This is facing the uh, the light source of the blue light. It's gonna have a blue tint to it. As it goes away from the light, it's gonna have less of that blue tint and more of just the natural um, wall color. In this case, it's kind of like a, a brownish gray. So I'm gonna add a little more, a little more brown. A touch more black. Cause it's just like before it gets darker as it, as it moves away from the light source. Go even darker. All right now, go darker as you could have guessed. Perfect. So same thing on this side. Like so. Okay, that's one side done. Now, unfortunately, you ain't gonna get much warmth because the, the light will be shining on this wall from the fire, so. Fire is on, the, on that side. Whoa. Grab another color there, shit. Alright, 
And we're gonna add a little, yeah, there'll be a little bit of warmth here from, from this light uh, over here. So we're gonna start on that. It'll be like right, right in here. Now it'll get darker as it uh, And a little more color. Same thing here. And it gets quite a bit darker again as it reaches these uh, crevices and stuff. Almost done with the walls. These are uh, going to be some pipes, this unpainted area. go it's also going to be dark right here because there's kind of a crevice where light wouldn't be getting to it same on the other side now I'm trying to debate what color do I want the beds to be I'm not sure you know what? I'm going to make another light source right here. I'm not sure what it's going to be. I'm going to paint this kind of this greenish color. Why, cause it's, why the hell not? But uh, I want it to be a little bit more yellow. A bit more desaturated than that. Meaning adding a little black gray right down. Okay, it's kind of different. This is, we'll probably be uh, put into different segments and parts. So this is the, the painting I've been working on. It's uh, called Warhoth. It's a city, I was kind of going for like a dystopian, s steampunk, futuristic, uh, industrial, um, feel. Got like the rain and the, the alley. It's the, this is the slums. And got to work more on this and what we did today. And, uh, can't wait to do part two and finish up this section with you guys. I hope you guys learned something, you know, 
And, uh, you know, every painting I do, I always learn something new, too, every single painting, which is why I enjoy it so much, you know. But uh, hopefully you guys at least got inspired by uh, some of the stuff that I did and makes you want to do your own artwork. And uh, hopefully it kind of helped. But, uh, yeah, can't wait to finish this. I've been working on this forever. And I'm really happy that... Um, and I'm finally done uploading the TikToks, and I can finally do full, full-length, actual painting sessions with you guys. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you watched it this far, and uh, I plan on uh, continuing on. You guys have a good one.